we, all of us, have a dark side. Few understood this better than the famous author Robert Louis Stevenson. His dark tales such as Markheim, The Body Snatcher, and most famously The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde explore that internal duality of man in a very literal way. But sometimes truth can be stranger than fiction. Sometimes the monsters inside of us are darker than anything we would dare to imagine. And sometimes, most frighteningly, those monsters come to the surface. The beginning of this story is the end of another, more familiar piece of history. It was April 14, 1865, Ford's Theater. President Abraham Lincoln sat in the box above the stage accompanied by his wife, Mary, and another couple they had invited, Clara Harris and her fiancé, Henry Rathbone. You probably know a lot of the details of that night. John Wilkes Booth was an actor who entered through a back entrance to the theater. He stood at Lincoln's back with a 44 aimed at the president's head. He waited until the moment for which he had planned, a joke in the play that would fill the audience with laughter. Enough laughter to mask even a gunshot. Henry Rathbone was a Union soldier, now a major who had served as a captain in the battles of Antietam and Fredericksburg of the American Civil War. Rathbone, of course, sprung into immediate action and attempted to stop the assassin, but even the decorated soldier found himself terrified by the sheer rage, the utter lack of humanity, the insanity on Booth's face. Booth slashed at Rathbone with a bowie knife before leaping onto the stage and making his famous escape. Despite the altercation and resulting injuries, Henry called out to make the crowd aware that Booth had shot the president before rushing to the door for medical assistance. Booth had, unfortunately, used a plank to jam the door shut, which Rathbone was forced to remove with his injured arm. After Lincoln had been transported across the street, Henry and Clara led Mary Lincoln to be with her dying husband. Mary noted the blood on Clara's dress, believing it to be her husband's, though it was more likely Henry's. Though Clara stayed with Mary in the vigil, Henry Rathbone fell unconscious probably due to shock and blood loss. Booth had severed an artery in Rathbone's arm after all. Rathbone was taken back to the Harris home for medical treatment. Lincoln died the following morning, but the president's fate was not the only one that was sealed that fateful night. Eighteen years later, Henry Rathbone would murder Clara Harris. The two were married just two years after Lincoln's assassination on July 11, 1867. By now, the wounds inflicted by Booth were nothing more than scars, but the memory of that night was still an open wound, and it would be until his death. Henry was haunted. Henry found himself in a state of unbearable guilt. Both General Ulysses S. Grant and Lincoln's personal bodyguard, Ward Hill Lehman, made it clear that they believed that they would have saved Lincoln had either of them been in attendance, implying that Rathbone had been ineffective in his duty to the president. Henry's condition worsened enough that he found himself struggling to find and keep work after retiring from the army. Henry tried to put the nightmares aside. He and Clara had three children together. Henry Riggs, Gerald Lawrence, and Clara Pauline. Work even took Henry and his family out of the country into Germany. Henry hoped the new surroundings and company of his family would begin to heal the tainted memories and hellish dreams. Sadly, they only grew worse. Henry suffered from abnormal medical issues. Neuralgia pained his head and face, and chronic dyspepsia plagued his stomach. Henry also reportedly had difficulty breathing and even had regular heart palpitations. Psychologically, Henry was also disturbed. Paranoia, guilt, and nervousness were constant states of his being. He believed Clara was having an affair, and that she planned to leave him and take their children with her. Clara, of course, was planning no such thing, but Harry would not be convinced that his fantasies were not reality, and even resented the attention Clara would give to their children. The inner demons of Henry Rathbone were growing in strength, and one day, they overpowered him. 
1883, the earliest hours of Christmas Eve. Henry Rathbone walked into the bedroom of his three children holding a revolver and a knife. Clara entered and talked Henry down and took him into their bedroom, closing the door behind them. There's no way to know what was said. There is no record of Clara's final words. Only that Henry shot and stabbed his wife of 16 years to death before stabbing himself in a failed suicide attempt. He would blame the events that transpired that morning on an unidentified attacker. He believed that he and his late wife were the victims of a crazed madman. An assassin. After his three children were sent back to the United States to live with their uncle, Henry Rathbone was declared insane and spent the remainder of his life at the Provincial Insane Asylum where he lived in constant fear. He believed that the other inmates were conspiring against him. He believed that the walls were hollow and filled with toxic gases. Ultimately, Henry Rathbone never recovered from his insanity. His paranoia, fear, and anguish after the events at Ford's Theater turned him into the very thing that had frightened him so much. I think that among the most horrific considerations regarding the tragedy of Henry Rathbone is the following question. What happened to Henry's mind? Was Henry a prisoner trapped in his own madness? Had the seeds of paranoia set into motion the deterioration of his sanity? All that is certain is that after Henry watched John Wilkes Booth kill Abraham Lincoln, he became obsessed with preventing it from ever happening again. But in the end, it did happen again because he caused it. I wonder if Henry ever tried to reconcile his actions. It seems likely, unfortunately, that he went to the grave believing that it was someone else. Henry being forced to watch what he had become and not recognizing that the monster he so deeply feared was him. A final piece of the story that I found interesting. Back in Albany, New York, and the old residence of the Rathbones, there was a closet which had been sealed with bricks. Behind the brick wall, a dress hung. It was the dress Clara Harris had worn the night Lincoln had been killed. It was still stained in Henry's blood. People in the house claimed that the gunshot that killed Lincoln could be heard on the anniversary of the assassination. There were claims of apparitions, most notably of Abraham Lincoln himself, but there was another apparition that the people of the house reported. A sobbing young woman wearing a blood-soaked dress. In 1910, one year before Henry's death in the asylum, his son, now a representative, reportedly returned to the Albany house. He tore down the brick wall of the closet. He took the dress his mother had worn. He understandably believed that the dress was cursed. Whether it was or wasn't is entirely up to you if you believe in that sort of thing. All I can say for sure is what became of the dress. Representative Rathbone, son of Henry, burned it. <laughs>